Hello everyone, my name is Typhoon and in this lecture you will learn about the boot process. So, what is the boot process? Basically, when you press the power button, electricity powers up the system and starts a series of commands. The system follows these steps like a climbing a ladder to reach the goal of loading operating systems. If any of these steps fail, the system won't load properly. The first step is the power on self test post. So during this test, the CPU accesses the read only memory ROM and basic input output system BIOS to check if essential motherboard functions are working. This is where you hear a beep when you turn the computer on and if there's an issue, the system will use beep calls to alert you to the problem. So if you don't have the motherboard manual, you can look it up, uh, the beep code online to find out what it means. After the post is completed successfully, the BIOS is activated and starts running. Keep in mind that at this point, the system hasn't yet accessed the storage media. All the program actions are happening at the motherboard level, not in the storage device. You can enter the BIOS by pressing the correct key combination, which is usually shown on the screen. The time to press the correct key to enter the BIOS can sometimes be very short. If you miss it, the system will continue with the boot process and access the storage device. The BIOS contains basic system information such as the amount of random access memory, the type of CPU, details about attached drives, and system's date and time. The easiest way to document this information is by taking a photograph on the screen. In this interface, you can also change the boot sequence. Typically, the system first checks the CD-DVD drive followed by the hard drive. So when creating a boot media later on, you will be able to adjust the boot settings here, ensuring the system boots from the device you provide rather than the suspect's storage device. In 2010, the BIOS was largely replaced by Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI, which provides similar functionality but offers several improvements enhanced security during the pre-boot process, faster startup times, support for drives larger than 2 terabytes, compatibility with 64-bit device drivers, support for the GUID partition table, which is GPT. UEFI's secure boot feature ensures that the only authenticated operating systems can be used during the boot process, which can be problematic if you are attempting to use an alternative boot device. As shown in this screen here, once the system powers on and passes the post test, it will boot using either the BIOS or UEFI, depending on the system configuration. The BIOS looks for the master boot record, MBR, on the boot device. The MBR found in sector zero holds vital information about the partitions, file systems, and the bootloader code needed to start the installed operating system. And once the BIOS locates and activates the MBR, control is passed to the operating system to complete the boot process. In the UEFI system, it looks for the GUID partition table, which is GPT, and the GPT includes a protective MBR to prevent legacy systems from mistakenly identifying the disk as unpartitioned and overwriting the data on it. So the GPT also stores partition entries and the backup partition table header, and the GPT disk can support up to 128 partitions on a Windows operating system. Similar to the BIOS process, once the active partition and bootloader are located, the operating system takes over the booting process. Now that you understand the boot process, it is important to control the boot environment, which we will manage by creating forensic boot media which we will be discussed in next lecture. My name is Stephen and I'm waiting you in next lecture.